Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the silver chart, weekly chart of the paper price, and that's really important because with the revelations that we've had here now, the manipulation being admitted, proven that uh, it's the paper price that drives everything. You can see here this volume trend line that really only started after the smackdown of the price here and you can see increasing increasing volume to keep the price of silver down now i'm going to show you with the proven manipulation admissions uh, from ubs and others are involved uh, these are just the ones coming out now but i'm going to show you how this manipulation has isolated any traders that would be long in the paper markets. In other words, they're put in a position where they can't protect themselves and for that reason they can't really enter the market in a serious way. What that does is that leaves the market to the manipulators alone. And uh, But let's start out with this uh, interview with uh, Vince Lancey talking about the manipulation of all markets, but this applies to the silver market. Then I'm going to go into these articles about the UBS scandal. The banks are the ones who made up the laws for Glass-Steagall. The market structure is set up to protect those already in power. The whole concept of too big to fail imply that we need a more diverse people in the markets providing services. What did the government do? They consolidated the banks even bigger. So now you have a bigger, more consolidated systemic risk in less firms. There is no way for a trader or short-term investor to compete with these people. And yet they advertise that you can just get in and out of markets with the click of a button. It now that's the main point I want you to take away from this. Two things. One, they're too big to fail and the average person can't play. Now, actually, in my opinion, the entity that's too big to fail is the Western governments. And gold and silver, but specifically silver, are the key to them failing because it will expose their Ponzi monetary scheme for what it is. But uh, we'll talk about how the mechanism works to keep them out when we see some of this evidence here. So let's start with this Zero Hedge article. Deutsche Bank provides smoking gun proof of massive rigging and fraud in the silver market. Back in April, we first reported that Deutsche Bank had agreed to settle allegations it had rigged the silver market in exchange for $38 million. We revealed something stunning. Quote, in a curious twist, the settlement letter revealed the former members of the manipulation cartel have turned on each other and that Deutsche Bank would provide documents implicating other precious metals riggers. To wit, in addition to valuable monetary consideration, Deutsche Bank has also agreed to provide cooperation to plaintiffs, including the production of instant messages and other electronic communications as part of the settlement. In plaintiffs' estimation, the cooperation to be provided by Deutsche Bank will substantially assist plaintiffs in the prosecution of their claims against non-settling defendants. Now, this is kind of interesting here because we know that it looks like Deutsche Bank got a pass. Now, if you remember my analysis of the Deutsche Bank chart, uh, I had said that Deutsche Bank, with the volume spike that it had, had made a bottom. And I think I said that if you're serious about this, you might want to pick up the 15 calls. Um, and you can see here, I was talking about it right after this volume spike had come in and you can see we touched down to that 10 price and uh, we had that breakout above through 14 and now you can see we had a huge spike recently all the way up to about 1850. So 
This seems to indicate that Deutsche Bank may have put themselves in the clear, at least on this issue. And it looks like they've turned and pointed the finger at UBS. Overnight, we finally got a glimpse into what this production contained. And according to documents filed by the plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit, what Deutsche Bank provided as part of its settlement was nothing short of a smoking gun proof that UBS Group AG HSB Holdings PLC, Bank of Nova Scotia, and other firms rigged the silver market. The allegation, as Bloomberg first noted, came in a filing Wednesday in a Manhattan federal court lawsuit filed in 2014 by individuals and entities that bought or sold futures contracts. In the document recorded surrendered, document records surrendered by Deutsche Bank and presented below, traders and submitters were captured coordinating trades in advance of a daily phone call manipulating the spot market for silver, conspiring to fix the spread on silver offered to customers, and using illegal strategies to rig prices. Plaintiffs are now able to plead with direct smoking gun evidence, including secret electronic chats involving silver traders and submitters across a number of financial institutions, a multi-year, well-coordinated, and wide-ranging conspiracy to rig prices, the plaintiffs said in their filing. The latest evidence is critical because, as plaintiffs add, the new scheme far surpasses the conspiracy alleged earlier. As a result, the litigants are seeking permission to file a new complaint with the additional allegations, i.e. demand even more reparations from the defendants who have not yet settled and perhaps even more evidence of ongoing market rigging. Their proposed complaint broadens the case beyond the four banks initially sued to include claims against units of Barclays PLC, BNP Paribas, Fortis SA, Standard Chartered PLC, and Bank of America Corp. Representatives of UBS, BNP Paribas, Fortis, HSBC, Standard Chartered, and Scotiabank didn't immediately respond to emails outside regular business hours seeking comment on the allegations. Barclays and Bank of America declined to immediately comment. The Deutsche Bank documents show, among other things, how two UBS traders communicated directly with two Deutsche Bank traders and discussed ways to rig the market. The traders shared customer order flow information, improperly triggered customer stop-loss orders, and engaged in practices such as spoofing, all meant to destabilize the price of silver ahead of the fix and result in forced selling or buying. It is also what has led to so many occasions to the infamous previous metals slam when out of nowhere billions in notional contracts emerge, usually with the intent to sell to halt any upside moment in the precious metals. It should be momentum. UBS was the third largest market maker in the silver spot market and could directly influence the price of silver financial instruments based on the sheer volume of silver it traded, the plaintiffs allege. Conspiring with other large market makers like Deutsche Bank and HSBC only increased UBS's ability to influence the market. Some examples of the chats quoted are shown below. In the first example, a chart between DB and HS, a chat between DB and HSBC See traders in which HSBC traders said, really want to sell silver, to which the other trader says, let's go and smash it together. So, uh, and then you have here the conversations between these two. And the one that I really want to concentrate on here is this one from June 8th, 2011. And it's interesting here, you can see that these chats start right here in May 11th. Now, this is when this is only about a week after the massive silver smash occurred and i believe and i've contended for a very long time that comes from the highest levels uh that again back to this argument of too big to fail that this order was given from the very highest levels this is the same weekend when obama presented his fake birth certificate this is the same weekend when they created the staged hoax capture and burial at sea of bin Laden. Uh, this is the same week that we had the five or six consecutive uh, in the middle of the night margin rate increases. So this was a coordinated effort by very, very powerful people, too big to fail people, to attack the silver market. And we can see here the traders piling on right afterwards. And why is that? the case. Well, I don't think that these traders were as much the culprits in it, although they may have been the bagmen, so to speak, but 
basically, in my opinion, they were given a green light to rig silver. And they were basically given a tacit uh, promise that they would not be prosecuted. And that, that's very interesting as well, because if there was a tacit promise, then will this actually point back uh, to the people who are really in charge? I don't believe the order given to smash the silver market as approached fifty dollars came from UBS. It came from much, much higher than that. And we may see some plea agreements uh, or these people might just be sacrificial lambs. We'll see. But what I wanted to concentrate on here is this stop busters here. You can see this June 8th conversation, UBS Trader A. And if you have stops, UBS Trader A, oh boy, Deutsche Bank Trader, haha. Who are you going to call? Stop busters. And then they laugh about that. Now that's very important. That's something I've talked about many times in the past, but this brings it out here. And I'm just going to explain it to you again on the chart. The way that this works is that when you are trading paper instruments, futures, you're talking about leverage contracts. You're talking about uh, nothing like the stock market. For example, in a stock market, we have margin requirements of 50%. So basically, you're allowed to borrow the same amount of money that you put up. So you can you can borrow twice as much, uh, you can invest twice as much as the money that you have. That's all you can do. Whereas futures generally are about 20 to 1. Now those margin requirements are adjusted based upon uh, volatility, uh, liquidity, other things. Of course, as I pointed out, they rigged those back in May of 2011 to crash the silver market. So they, they can change. But as a general rule, 5% is roughly the amount of money you have to put up to control 100% of a commodity. So that's 20 times leverage. So when you're talking about operating with 20 times leverage in these markets, that means that you have extreme upside potential, but you also have extreme downside potential. And the margin calls that you can receive can be larger than the amount that you have on deposit. If you're a particularly large entity, which can be subject to lawsuits, then they can go after more money. So any traders who are involved in these markets, unless they're too big to fail or have the printing press or have uh, endless backstops, they have to use stop loss orders because if the market goes against them, they can lose more than they've even invested. So that's why stop loss orders are so important. Now, what this trading strategy does with having these market riggers collude in something like uh, this downdraft here or this downdraft here. Gunning for stops is a term that's used on the floor when you're talking about collusion between market makers or uh, people investing in whatever commodity. And the way it works is that different groups of people have bids at different prices. They have some of those bids in the market. They're actually placed orders that are placed in the market. Those are buy stops. There are other markets that they have just on their book that they intend to execute when a certain price is reached, they intend to buy. Now, if they collude together and someone sells a large number of contracts and the rest of the people who have buy stops pull those buy stops and the people who have buys in their books don't execute those buys, then obviously you can run the stops. In other words, all the people who aren't in on this, their buy stops get triggered and they get taken out of the market. Oftentimes, you'll see when there's a a game like that being played, uh, you'll see something like this where it will go down and go right back up to where it was trading. But basically, uh, the buy stops that were taken out, actually, I'm sorry, I had that reversed. Those are the sell stops. So the sell stops that are taken out when those prices go down to that point, uh, basically, those people sell out a low price. They take a loss and then the price snaps right back up. So the traders on the floor have an incentive to gun for stops. 
they take out all their um, buy stops, and then when the price falls, people sell at the lowest price. And what that does is that harms the traders who aren't involved in the rigging. And the major consequence of that is that no significant money of any size can come into a market that's run like that because uh, they can be wiped out so quickly. So what that does is it makes it so that the physical market is the only market that really can impact the price of silver because on the long side there really aren't any players. They're too afraid of going long with uh, what they've seen, the carnage that they've seen in the past. So they may uh, trade in and out on a daily basis, but it's very unlikely that they will put in a long-term buy, even though you can see that for the most part, uh, most of the time in this bull market, any type of accumulating strategy would have been very successful. For example, in this run-up, uh, a process of just adding to your longs, adding one contract at a time, and rolling over your contracts would have been extremely profitable, but you have this massive smash down here. Same thing on this run up, but you have this mass massive smash down here. Notice that you never see a move up that's anywhere the size of these moves down. Probably the most you'll see was this one here, or this one as we were running up to that final top, where we get this fairly large blue candlestick right in here. It won't give me the arrow for some reason. Fairly large blue candlestick right there. We have a fairly large blue candlestick at the top. But again, nothing compared to this gigantic red candlestick right in here. Same thing, we have massive red candlesticks here and here compared to what we've had before. Uh, those types of downdrafts where there's collusion in the market make it virtually impossible for any serious longs and again, the physical market is so small that it's going to be impossible for any entities that have any money, whether they be sovereign wealth funds, whether they be hedge funds, whether they be billionaire investors, uh, those people are all going to have to take a position in these futures markets. That's the only way they're going to be able to play. There just isn't enough physical silver for them to buy it or sell it, they, it take delivery of it. It's not possible. They have to play in the paper market. But since the paper market is rigged against buyers by these criminals, um, there's no way for that to happen. That's exactly what they intend because they know, as I've said for so long, that silver is their Achilles heel. They have to be defeated by physical stackers unless, of course, this thing breaks. And we've had a lot of promises. If you remember before, we had Bart Chilton with the CFTC. A lot of people were betting on him being able to uh, bring this thing out, uh, including Ted Butler and many others. I was very, very doubtful. Uh, but this is a statement about this story now uh, taken from Bill Murphy. This is from Harvey Organ's blog from Bill, Bill Murphy today. Quote, what has just been reported about Deutsche Bank and some other bullion banks is exactly what Andrew McGuire told the CFTC's Bart Chilton in early 2010 when the CFTC wouldn't allow Andrew to testify in front of that infamous all-day hearing, which was televised over the internet, he provided Adrian Douglas, Adrian Douglas being the guy that they tried to run over with a car so he couldn't testify, and myself with the details sent to Bart, and we were able to get the gist of his information on the record during a question and answer period. My testimony is to the right on my blog and so that is exactly what was being alleged back then and a lot of people were banking on the hope that regulators would actually come out and do something about this uh, it appears closer now than it was then that the regulators are going to do something but it's my contention that this conspiracy, and it obviously is, it's a proven, it's a, not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. There is a conspiracy to suppress the price of silver, 
and I don't believe that these traders were operating with what they believe was impunity at the time without knowing that the order to suppress the price of silver had come from a much, much higher place than uh, just these traders in the bank. But with this story, at least it's clear that the manipulation is proven. And we'll talk to you next time.